Welcome back to part three of our series where we are exploring the world of Azure SQL databases. So in our previous video, probably our most important video of this series, we created our SQL database along with our SQL Server. And we walked through all the intricacies of doing that and understanding compute models and uh, compute tiers, service tiers, purchasing models, all sorts of fun stuff. And now that we have our resource created, we also took some time to explore the Azure portal and some of the features that come along with your particular SQL database. And now that we have at least a high level overview of the different resources and tools we have at our disposal, we're now gonna move on to the next topic, which is connecting to our database using some of the tools that I listed in the first video. The first tool that we're gonna be talking about is SQL Server Management Studio. And so I actually have a link that I already have open that we're gonna to go to. This is a nice little tutorial for those of you who want the official documentation to connect to your database. So I will be providing this link as well. However, if you go to the top of this wonderful little thing, they're gonna have the prerequisites in order to do this particular tutorial. Now, you do need SQL Server Management Studio. So if you click this little link here, it will redirect you to the download page where SQL Server Management Studio is. And so this is the page it will redirect you to. And so obviously download SQL Server Management Studio. In this situation, if you need to download it, it's right here. Now you just wanna click that little button. You can just do save as, where do I wanna save it? Oh, we'll put it on my desktop. It's a rather large download, it's about half a gig. And then from here, it's gonna do its whole little database thing and all that kind of fun stuff. So you can open the file. I'm gonna close all this out. If it's gonna open, is it going to open? Sure, there we go. Okay, so basically it's, it's really simple. Once you come to this page, you just click it and you click install. It does take a few minutes to install, so just be aware of that. It's not gonna be like a done in like two seconds like VS Code and all the other ones. This does take a little bit. So once it does install, you will then be able to use it. So I'm gonna close this out because I already have it installed. Close that out, perfect. And then I'll put this right here for the time being. And then let's do this. Let's actually open up SQL Server Management Studio. So I'm going to open this wonderful application. And then from here, we're gonna need some information in order to connect to it. Obviously we're gonna need our username and password like we've done in previous videos. What I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to, ah, uh, oh, not that, damn. So I'm actually gonna get rid of this, get rid of that, We're good to go. So let's grab our server name. And so if we actually go back to our Azure portal, and then we go to, there's actually a couple of different places you could technically go. So probably the easiest one, you can just disregard that. It's just go here to overview. And so overview, this is your connection string. So if you just do the copy to clipboard, you go back to SQL Server Management Studio, you paste that in. Now from here, there's a couple of different operations, right? So you have Windows authentication, you have Azure Active Directory, Azure Active Directory password, Azure Active Directory integrated. I just do SQL Server authentication. It's the easiest one by far. Uh, it, it's just the more straightforward one. <laughs> that's just, there's less that can technically go wrong with that one, I feel, but that's my opinion. So you wanna provide your username, and then finally you wanna provide that password that you set up as well. I like to make sure I remember the password so it saves it for next time. And then I'm gonna connect. It does take a few seconds, so just be aware. Okay, perfect. And then there you go, you've basically connected to the database. So now if you want to examine your database and your server in a little bit more detail, you can. So you can see here, this is our server. 
This is our actual database, so our sigma coding test. Here we have our tables like we've talked about before. So if I wanna actually execute a query here, I now have the capability of doing that. So I'm gonna create a new query by clicking our new query icon. And I actually have a query that's set up for us. And so let me, this is just a very simple one. So all this does is it's going to, let me get this out of the way so it's a little bit cleaner, less distraction. So all this does is it's going to create a table inside of our database if it's already not there. So in this situation, I have to change a few things. So right now this is for an old database that's not currently there. So I'm gonna grab this little guy right here, copy that, and then I'm going to delete that, and then that's good. So it's gonna create in this database, news articles CNBC. So I'm gonna copy this, put it inside of here, looks good. <clears throat> and then make sure you have this uh, change. So right now it's on master. We want it on Sigma coding test. This always gets me in trouble because I'll do stuff like that. Okay, looks good. So it looks like it successfully created the table. So if I refresh this, I now see my table. So I actually have a, a very simple query that will just insert some data. So if I go to my insert query, this is already pre set up for me, so I'm hoping it works, right? <laughs> um, so let's see what happens. I'm hoping this one works. If not, I might, oh, that's right. I got to change the thing, right? CNBC. Oh, Lordy, I hope I put the right one in there. Oh, darn, darn, darn. Yeah, it doesn't have thumbnail. Don't worry, I have this set up so we can use a different one. I don't know why I grabbed that one. Okay, here we go. Let's use this one. I think this one's a safer bet. Okay, I'm gonna paste that. So all this is gonna do is it's going to insert these values into these specific columns. Hopefully this is not something that people are super new to when it comes to SQL database, hopefully. Okay. This is the one thing you have to be really, really careful about. This kind of stuff. These kind of little things with the quotes and all that kind of stuff, they can cause all sorts of issues. And I don't mean to be difficult. I'm just saying it, it tends to cause issues. So just be aware of that. And there's also something you can do here too, where you can view the output. Okay, well, let's just run it again. Okay, so that's good. It looks like it worked. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna query this particular table. So I'm gonna say script table as select to new query window. So it's gonna generate a script for me and I can see the data I just put in there. Now, additionally, you can see this data now in visual, I'm sorry, not visual studio code, um, inside of the Azure portal. So if you go to query editor now and you log back in, so I love coding. I hope that I spelled that correctly. Looks good. Now you can see that my table is there. And I can also see the columns. Now keep in mind, you only get, you only get a very limited feature functionality. So just keep that in mind, but you can do basic queries. So I can select that information from the query as well. So that's pretty neat. You can also do edit data. Uh, this sign up only applied to. Oh, sure. Let's see what happens. I've never done this. So, what happens? Can I edit it? Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Very neat. 
So it looks like there might be a new feature out there soon. Good news. But it looks like we might be able to edit it in Azure Portal as well. So this is a good news though, because right now you can't do this with the SQL management package. And it is one thing that I, I wish they would have. And if they can do it here, that to me says they're gonna try to do it in the, the SQL management package. I just have a feeling, that's my opinion. So at this point, that's actually how you would connect to it using the SQL Server Management Studio. In our next video, we are going to use the Azure Data Studio in order to do the same as well. So we're gonna use that particular tool in order to connect to our database. So if you have any questions more specifically to SQL Server Management Studio, then feel free to put those comments down below. Otherwise, we will see you in video number four.